Pascal uh, talked about how he, well, when he first came over across to North America, he had to educate himself on matters of racial injustice and, uh, and, and North America compared to, to when he was in Cameroon. And, and Mark also talked a little bit about that, like from Europe. So I was just wondering, um, how, like given the international flavor of your roster, have you guys discussed kind of matters of, of racial injustice uh, like kind of in different parts of the world and not just in uh, here in North America? Well, I think that uh, those discussions have come uh, in the middle of our discussions. You know, a lot of these discussions have been open forums. And, you know, from Mark, uh, even Sergio Scariola has shared some, some of his uh, moving from Italy to Spain to Russia to Canada to, you know, um, stories. Uh, so I think that everybody that has their own unique um, background and situations of where they've spent time and lived has shared some of those stories. Yeah, Stephen. And um, has it, like, 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 do you, do you guys have have an idea yet? Like, like, like what kind of, uh, like, perhaps what demonstration that that you you, you may want to do uh, pregame uh, on Saturday? Uh, yeah, I think they, I think the players have that stuff figured out. Uh, would you be willing to share it with with us? No, no I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, it's not. It's not for me to share. It's their. It's their deal. Right. Thanks a lot, Nick. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for the questions, man. Appreciate it. Next, we go to Eric Kareen of the Athletic. Hey, Nick. Thanks so much for taking the time, as always. Um, vague question. Uh, Heading into the seeding games and then into the playoffs, are, are there like one or two things that you think to yourself, if my team does this and does this, man, we're going to have a really good chance to make a lot of noise? Well, I think that, um, you know, this is a big thing, a big one thing. And, and I think we've already shown we can play about as good a defense as any team in this league, right? Um, before the before the break and um, you know I think that if we get back to playing that way that can take us that can take us about as far as as far as we want to go I know there that's, anything? I know that's a big thing right that's not like I'm not I'm not well, I, but that's that's you know the way we can play defense if we can get to that point and, and play it at a playoff level, which we've already kind of done too, then, then I think we ought to have a, a chance to figure some, everything else out, you know? Yeah, well, Mark answered the question by saying scoring and stopping other teams. So uh, <laughs> I, I don't, I, I think that's basically it. I, I guess what I'm trying to get at is, is there anything that you've yet to see or haven't seen enough of that you really would like to, like, not need to be proven, but you'd like to see to reach that next level. No, I mean, I think we've seen just about all of it, Eric. I mean, I think, you know, you're going to kind of want to see it again. I think yeah. this break is kind of, you know, you, you know, you want to see if the same feel is still there, the rhythm, the rotations, you know, there's lots of things we could start talking about but a lot of it feels like it's, you know, kind of there already. And, and when the stakes go up, we, the, the intensity should go up and we ought to be able to do that. It's not like we haven't been through it, you know? So that's all I have to say about that. Appreciate it, Nick. Stay healthy. You too, Eric. Thank you. Going next to Rachel Brady from the Globe and Mail. Hey, Nick. Um, I wonder since you have, you know, a limited number of your staff um, overall in the bubble, I wonder if there are ways you've had to streamline the way you guys operate every day. And if you had to double up on jobs kind of for anybody or lean on people outside the bubble, like are there ways you operate differently there than you would outside at home and on the road? Well, yeah, of course, you know, we're missing some, some key people. Um, we're missing a lot of our youth, Rachel. Right. And our youth, uh, our youth does a lot of the player development and, you know, you guys, you guys see them after practice, you know, dribbling and garden and 
chasing rebounds and passing and all that stuff. So um, we've had to, we've, our coaches have put in some, you know, the much longer days. They're, they're, they're having to do all that stuff as well as watch their film and prepare practice and show, show the film individually to players. They're spending a lot of time on the court in the player development areas. Um, as well, there's there's other areas too. You know, John Goodwill, he's kind of moved out of the film room, but we've moved him back into it because because he's our he's got the most experience of of kind of organizing the the plan around the film and scouting and you know we just didn't have room to bring bring all of our you know our uh, film young younger film guys and stuff. So yeah, we're all kind of pitching in where we can. Thanks. And final question is going to go to Greg Ross from the CBC. Hey, Nick. Uh, I'm just wondering, um, now that you've had a couple of games in the bubble there, um, when you think about just how crazy it was in this city last year on that playoff run and, you know, being in that building with 20,000 fans, when you think about how you're going to have to go into these playoffs, I mean, do you have to change anything when you minus that element, when you, when you don't have those 20,000 fans and probably another few thousand outside the building? I mean, how do you as a coach have to change your mindset going into this to get your players that energy they need uh, for the playoffs? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure yet, Greg, to be honest with you. I think, you know, it's different and there'll be some changes. I think, um, I don't know. I think that there's there's a sense, there's a little bit of an atmosphere at these games to to um, be be more quiet as a as a as a communicator because everybody in the whole gym can hear everything you're saying. So so I don't know. I, I kind of come to the point where I didn't say much in those first three scrimmages, but. I can't, I don't think I'm going <laughs> to, I think I'm going to have to do what I'm going to have to do, whether people hear it or not, right? Because I'm going to be in there competing. So I would imagine that, um, I would imagine people are going to get a, a, a hear a lot of things they probably haven't heard from a, from a coach before or in a competitive situation. But that's just the way it's got to be. That's the only difference I can think of right now. I mean, we're going to miss our fans and we're certainly going to miss the electricity outside the arena um etc but hopefully hopefully everybody's going to be watching and cheering and and uh we'll feel them somehow some way anyway you know what about from a player's perspective uh, you know trying to get these guys motivated does that change at all or do you think that they're able to just lock in and kind of tune everything else out yeah i mean i think they are i think uh once again the stakes go up a little bit the games are the game's intensity is going to go up and they're going to have to play great um you know, to, to keep keep going and, and to play as play as well as they want to play. Uh, most of the time, whether there's twenty thousand people there or no people, when the ball goes up, that little that little kind of shield right around the court becomes all you really can hear and see and focus in on. Anyway, you know, you, you kind of lose yourself in the game. So a lot of that stays the same. 